this class we will be doing some thermal properties of uh, gases or let's say uh, any materials may it be solids and liquids also right uh, so as uh, as the chapter suggests we are going to discuss the thermal properties which means all the things are related to temperatures right so first thing is the thermal expansion that you have some volume and in some volume you have some gases or let's say you have some uh, rod or anything like that and you give some heat give some energy and the temperature rises and then and you, then you see what happens with that okay so first thing happens is that they can expand right so there are three kinds of uh, thermal expansion so one is the one is the linear one right let's say this was the rod and you heated that you gave some energy you raise its temperature and then it elongated to some some let's say length delta right and then you have what a uh, superficial superficial expansion so let's say this was some area and then uh, you raise the temperature and then it became this right so it extended delta l here and it extended delta l here okay so this is the superficial expansion and then you have the volumetric expansion which you can also call the cubical yes so if we heat the rod sir sir will it yes. not like the area will also expand so is it uh, also like the superficial uh, we are we are assuming that uh, it has only one dimension the the this distance is very small we are this distance as compared to this is very small right Okay, so uh, yes, so cubic expansion that let's say you have some volume and then you heat it, okay, and then it goes like this, right? Okay, I made a mess of this image, so you understand. So this changes by delta L in all the directions, right? So this is the volumetric expansion or the cubic expansion. Right, and you all, you have also uh, heard about the strains, right? The Hooke's law, which says that. Okay, so let me discuss it uh, later. Okay, so the one first expansion is the linear expansion, right? So linear expansion. So this increases like this okay and uh, this is the original length so it expands like uh, this it follows this law so the expansion is directly proportional to the length and the change in temperature right so when you uh, when you uh, from experiments, you find that there is some proportionality constant. So it is called the linear expansion factor, right? So this is the coefficient of linear expansion. So L is the original length. Yes, L is the original length, right? L is the original length. Right, and it expanded to some delta distance. Okay. I'm sorry, guys, I'm feeling a little bit uh, low. My health is not that okay. So I'm talking very slowly right now. Okay, yes. So uh, then what will be the fractional change? So this would be the fractional change, right? Okay. 
And uh, what would be the final length of that uh, material or that uh, linear, this rod? This would be L prime, which will be L plus. L plus delta. Right, 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 right. So this is L plus, and this is what? Alpha L delta T, right? So L is common, so we will have alpha delta T, right? So this is your new L. Okay, any question guys? No, sir. So uh, let us do some problems based on this. Okay, who has joined? Hello, Marita. Good, uh, good afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, anything. Yes, uh, first of all, many, many congratulations in cracking that uh, that uh, JE exam. Many congratulations. You. So your hard work paid off, right? So why are you bothering to join this class? <laughs> you want to also crack, crack this uh, neat exam, what? No, so my needs are not good. That, that will be good this time. So, uh, and in this exam, all the students, I wish them very luck. And uh, and let's see, you have, you guys have worked hard. So whether you do something or not, you guys have already worked hard. So that, that matters. Right. Yes, so I was saying that uh, let's do the first question. Simple question. Yes, so this question is very simple. A copper rod of 88 centimeter and an aluminum rod of unknown length have their increase in length independent of increase in temperature. The length of aluminum rod is, right? Okay. So a copper rod of 88 centimeter and uh, aluminum rod of an have their increase in length independent of increase in temperature. So this doesn't uh, depend upon the temperature, right? And we have to find the length of the aluminum rod. Okay, so how will you do this question? Guys, so in uh, this time, I will be asking you guys to, yes. Hmm. Guys, anyone? We know what? Length of copper rod is giving. Yes, so we know length of copper is 88 centimeter, right? And uh, an aluminum rod of unknown length have their increase in length independent of increase in temperature. Right, so uh, length of aluminum is not known, right? We have to find that. But it is given that uh, aluminum rod of unknown length have their increase in length uh, independent of increase in temperature. So this doesn't depend upon Delta L of, uh, let's say, uh, delta L of uh, what copper doesn't depend upon delta of something T, right? So this is only dependent upon the coefficient of expansion. So let's say alpha and uh, L, right? And you have uh, this uh, delta L of uh, Delta L of what? Uh, aluminium is some alpha two of L. Uh, we don't know, right? L aluminium, right? So you guys do this question, okay? This is the first question, right? Yes. C. 
Yes, so anyone else got C answer? Hmm? Anyone else? Anyone else got C answer? Hmm? Okay, so take this, you guys try this question. Okay, I will leave that because no one is. Okay, so now let us try this question. Okay, so railway lines are laid with caps to allow for expansion. If the, so these are railway lines, right? This is a railway line up to this length. Okay, and these are some gaps here. Okay, and uh, if the gap between steel rails of length 66 meters, so this length is 66 meter, right? And the gap is what? 3.63 centimeter, right? So this is, delta L is given. 3.63 centimeter and uh, your length is given. 66 meters, right? And uh, the temperature is given, the de temperature difference is given, 10 degrees C, right? So then at what temperature will the lines just touch? So they have to cover this distance, right? So at what temperature? Okay, oh, sorry. Uh, at what temperature with with uh, the line, so T naught is given, right? Not the delta T. Okay, so T naught is given, which is what? Uh, 20, 10 degree C, right? And we have to find T final, okay? So how will you guys calculate this? And they must have given the uh, what? The coefficient of linear expansion. So this is not given. Right. Can you guys calculate in terms of the coefficient of expansion? What will be the formula? So the formula is this. Yes. So what is the formula? Delta L by L is alpha T minus T naught. Right. So this is the formula, you use this formula and then calculate. You know, uh, this distance, this distance, this distance, you know, this distance, you know. In terms of alpha, we have to find. Guys, anyone? Okay, who is solving this question? Yes, sir. Did I not write the alpha here? Hmm. Yes, so I missed alpha. Alpha is what? Alpha is, let's say, 11 into 10 to the power minus six degree C inverse. So this is the alpha, right? Guys, please solve this. Is anyone solving? Arpit is solving, anyone else? Because, uh, yes, so please try this question and then we will move on to the next question. Let me give one moment, please, guys. I yes, one moment, guys.
Hmm? Okay, so what, uh, let me do this problem again. This is uh, yes, 60. So let us try to solve this problem. So uh, what will be delta L by L is alpha T minus T naught. And uh, you are given what? Delta L is 3.63 into 10 to the power minus two by L is how much? 66. This is uh, alpha is uh, what 11 and t minus t naught is t minus 10 degree right so this would be what 11 into so this would be 3.63 into 10 to the power minus 2 by 66 into 11 into 10 power minus 6 is t minus 10 Right, so you will get what? So this is 36 and this is how much? 3.63 by 66 into 11 into 10 to the power four is T minus 10. Right, so T will be 10 plus something, which is this. 66 into 11 into 10 to the power 4 degrees T. So this is the answer. I don't know what is the final answer. Okay. So you said uh, you said uh, 60 orbit, right? So let's say this. Let me calculate. Uh, uh, this is what 3.63 into. Um, and uh, equals divided by 66 divided by 11. So this is 50, right? Yes, so you are correct. Right, guys, any, any problem in this question? Guys, any problem in this question? No, sir. Okay, so now the next uh, thing is this uh, superficial expansion. So superficial expansion, we have the area expansion, right? So your delta A by A is, or you say your change in area is directly proportional to uh, the area and the temperature, change in temperature, right? So you will have what? Uh, you will have the area change will be equal to some beta and A delta T, right? Where your beta is the coefficient of superficial expansion, right? So this will be what? So the fractional change will be this. And uh, your new area will be what? Area will be A plus delta A. So this would be what? Uh, A plus this A beta delta T, right? So this would be A plus beta delta T, right? So this is your new area. Similarly, you will find uh, the cubical expansion. The cubical expansion like this. 
your uh, volume will be rho uh, your v prime will be v1 plus gamma delta t right so these are the thermal expansion of uh, thermal expansion of different uh, kinds right and there are these uh, coefficients alpha beta and gamma so all these three are related right so alpha is beta by two and then gamma by three, right? So this is how they are related. Okay. And uh, if, uh, if someone asks you what would be the density expansion, right? So how will the density expand? So you know that uh, density is what? Mass by volume, right? And you know how volume changes. So this would be rho prime will be V prime, right? And uh, this would be V by V and then one plus uh, gamma delta T, right? So this rho prime would be M by V is rho. So this would be one plus gamma delta T. And if you take uh, this guy in here, so this would be what? One by one plus gamma delta T inverse. So inverse. And uh, let's say this guy gamma delta T is uh, very, very less than one. So we can use, we can keep only the first expansion of binomial expansion, right? Only the first term of. So this would be what? One minus of gamma delta t. Okay, so this is how your volume will decrease if your, uh, if density will uh, what? Decrease, as you can see. Because if you increase the volume, then of course, obviously the density will decrease, right? Okay, so this was about the thermal expansion and uh, let's do more problems uh, based on this. Okay. Mm. Okay, so this question, second question. Coefficient of linear expansion of brass and steel rods are alpha one, alpha two. Length of brass and steel rods are if L2 minus L1 is maintained at all temperatures, which one of the following statement relations holds good, right? So L2 minus L1 is maintained, right? Your, this is the information that uh, L2, minus L1 is L2 prime minus L1 prime. This is the information. And uh, you use L2 prime and L1 prime, right? L2 prime is what? This is uh, L2 one plus what? Uh, linear expansion, so alpha delta T, right? And uh, alpha one. And this is L1, 1 plus alpha. Okay, so this is 2. And this is 1. So use this and this and uh, tell me what will be the answer. Guys, please do that. So who is solving the question? Hmm. Yes. 
Okay, Arpit. And uh, what about uh, everyone else? Yes, uh, Marita has also solved C answers. Okay. So alpha one, L1, and alpha two, L2. And uh, what about Arpit? What did you get? So uh, this was L2. So L2 one plus alpha two delta T minus L1 one plus alpha one delta T was equal to L2 minus L. Right, so this is L2 plus L2 alpha two delta T minus L1 and then minus of L1 uh, delta T alpha 1 L2 minus L1. Right, so L2 minus L1 gets cancelled and we have L2 alpha 2 delta T is uh, L1 alpha. Right, so T T cancel. So this is the relation we get. Okay. So yes, uh, right. Uh, right, uh, Marita. Okay, Arpit, uh, did you get the answer? Okay, yes. So uh, the next question is the volume of coefficients. The value of coefficient of volume expansion of glycerine is uh, this and the fractional change in the density of glycerine, right? So they are asking about fractional change in, uh, fractional change in the density of glycerine, right? This they are asking, right? And uh, what uh, did we calculate? What was our uh, delta rho? So delta rho was uh, delta rho was uh, what rho? And then one minus this is uh, well the coefficient of volume of expansion. So volume expansion is given. So gamma and then uh, what delta t, right? This is given and uh, this would be divided by rho. So we have to find one minus gamma delta t, right? And uh, rise of temperature is given, which is 40 degrees C, right? So this is given uh, one minus, okay, one minus uh, what? Uh, five into 10 to the power minus four, right? And into delta, delta T is what? 40 degrees C, which means, uh, which means uh, 40 degrees, right? So this is, this is uh, how much? One minus uh, five, four, 200. And this is uh, how much? So this is uh, 0 0.02, uh, right? So this is 0 point, uh, 0 point what? So this is uh, eight, and uh, this is what nine zero point nine eight. Uh, did I do anything wrong here? B. Okay, B. So uh, the fractional change in the density of glycerine for a rise of forty degrees. Right. So uh, what did we do wrong here? Delta rho. Delta rho was what? Delta rho was uh, a rho and then uh, gamma and then delta 
T, right? And then by row would be this, right? So this would be gamma and delta T, right? And gamma, we know this is 40 and this is 5 into 10 to the power minus 4. So this is 0 0.02. Yes, correct. This is wrong. Okay. So uh, why everyone is not solving? Is there a problem in solving this? Hmm, guys, is this uh, some tough question? No, no. Okay, so let me do this problem, uh, which uh, Marita and Arpit has done earlier. Right, so, okay, so this question, I will be doing. Okay, so, in this question, a clock with the iron pendulum keeps correct time at 20 degrees C. Right. So they have made a clock uh, with uh, some simple pendulum. Right. So your pendulum is uh, ticking and uh, that decides how your time is ticking. Right. So your second, uh, your second uh, that uh, in the watch, your second uh, is uh, what uh, linked with this uh, pendulum. Right. So your second needle is uh, linked with this uh, pendulum, right? You have, you must have all seen that kind of uh, wa watch, right? So that is uh, some wall uh, wall watch, right? And you have also seen some sand clock also, right? So sand is dipping, and then that the the the, the decrease in the volume of uh, or the the decrease in the density of that sand decides how much time is uh, ticking how time is uh, evolving right so in this example you have some iron pendulum right which uh, keeps correct time at 20 degrees c right so your t naught is given 20 degrees C and uh, how much will it lose or gain if temperature changes to so your T final is given. T final is given 40 degree C, right. And then we have to find, uh, okay, so coefficient of cubical expansion of iron is given. So what is the coefficient of cubical, exp cubical expansion? Is it alpha, beta, or gamma? What? So Myra, is it what? Which expansion is given? Gamma. Yes, so gamma is given, right? And this is 36 into 10 to the power minus six degree C inverse, right? And, uh, and we have to find uh, how much will it lose or gain its temperature? How much will it lose or gain if temperature changes? So we have to find the time, difference in time. Right. Okay. And uh, so we know from simple harmonic motion from SHM, we know what is the time that pendulum shows. Right. It's a uh, it's, uh, periodicity or it's time period. Right. We know this is how the time is related. Okay. And uh, you know that uh, G is fixed. 2 pi is fixed, so your time varies as L half, right? So, uh, and you also know that uh, from the linear expansion theory that how the length changes, right? So from linear expansion, we know that uh, length is uh, directly proportional to alpha L and delta T. Right, so this we have to use and we have to find what would be. So your T1 
is let's say uh, L1 half and T2, let's say some proportion L T2 will be uh, L2 half, right? So we have to find T1, T2 by T1 will be what? L2 by L1 and then half, right guys? We have to find delta t. Oh, I have written. So let us write uh, this like this. Okay. So, and uh, we know what is R L2. Right. So we know L2 is L1, 1 plus uh, alpha delta t and uh, this is L1, right? So uh, this would be what? This would be L1 will cancel and uh, we know one plus uh, alpha is what? Alpha gamma is given and we know that alpha is uh, gamma, with gamma by three, right? So, this would be what 12 into 10 to the power minus 6 right so this is 12 into 10 to the power minus 6 and uh, you have delta t as 20 degrees right so this will be half and uh, then this would be how much so this is 1 plus uh, this is 240 and uh, 10 to the power minus 6 right to the power half okay so this would be this would be what uh, one minus uh, so this would be zero point uh, how much so this is zero point uh, zero two four no so this is uh, Let's say uh, this is three, so we have three more, 0 0.024, right? So one plus 0 0.0024 power half, and this is one plus 0 0.0024 half, right? So T2 by T1 is this, right? And when we take, uh, T2 by T1 minus of, uh, let's say, T1. And uh, let's do component to dividend over here, right? So this is, this is this. So this would be what? T2 minus T1 and then T2 plus T1, right? So this would be what? 1 plus 0, 0, 2, 4. What am I doing? Okay, so we needed to calculate uh, uh, we needed to calculate right, so we needed to calculate delta t, right, which was t2 minus t1. Okay, we need to calculate this. So uh, we should have calculated T2 first, right? And then, uh, right, so this we can also do, right? So we know T2 is what? This is uh, 1.0024 half minus, uh, let's say T1. So delta T would be what? T2 minus T1. So this would be one plus zero zero two four half minus T minus T1, right? And we have, we, we would want to uh, find the fractional change. So delta T by T1, this would be what? Uh, 1.0024 half, minus one, right, divided by T1, which gets canceled. So this would be our answer, right? So this is 
hard answer any any question guys or or you could guy you would have done uh, this problem by other way around also right so you could have used uh, so you could have used t which was 2 pi root l by g right and uh, you could have find uh, t2 which would have been t2 pi l2 by g and in l2 place you could have written all the values here and then you just calculate t2 minus t1 so that that would also give you the answer right any any question guys any question yes sir okay yes so the next uh, the next question is uh, this one right so uh, before i do this question uh, so two different wires having length l1 and l2 and the respective temperature coefficient of linear expansion are alpha and uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2 right joined end to end then the effective temperature coefficient of linear expansion is right so this question Hmm. Okay. This time, you guys, please uh, cooperate and solve this problem. Yes. Okay, so two wires uh, having different uh, length L1. So this was one wire, right? And this was second wire. And uh, this is L1 and this is L1, L2. And respective temperature coefficient is alpha 1 and alpha 2, right? And uh, they are joined end to end. And then we have to find the effective temperature coefficient of linear expansion. Let's say we gave it some raise in temperature, right? And then it expanded, right? So we have to find what would be the uh, alpha prime, which is the effective, effective coefficient of expansion, right? So if we know that uh, the L uh what do we know that we know that l1 prime is what l1 1 plus alpha 1 delta t right and l2 prime is what l2 1 plus alpha 2 delta t right so what would be l1 plus l2 prime This would be L1, 1 plus alpha 1 delta T, and this would be L2 T, 1 plus alpha delta T, right? And let's say the effective, the effective, uh, the effective uh, coefficient, let's say alpha prime is L1 plus L2 and uh, 1 plus alpha prime delta t right so this is the effective uh, yes so this is what l1 a1 plus l2 a2 right so let us see okay so divided by l1 plus l2 right so this would be what uh, 
So this would be L1, L2, and uh, one plus alpha prime delta T, which is equals to L1, L1, and then uh, plus L1 alpha one delta T, and then L2 plus L2 alpha two delta T, right? So L1 plus L2, we have uh, L1 plus L2, and then plus L1 plus L2, alpha prime and then delta t which is uh, l1 plus l2 plus l1 uh, alpha 1 plus l2 alpha 2 delta t right so this gets cancelled and we have uh, alpha prime delta t also cancelled so alpha prime is what l1 uh, alpha 1 plus l2 alpha 2 plus so this one, right? So Maita, you are correct. Okay. So this is the effective uh, linear, linear, <laughs> linear coefficient of expansion for this case, right, guys? Yes, okay. sir. Yes. So uh, the next question is uh, this one. So if uh, volume of block of metal changes by 20%, right? So this is the percentage change in the volume, right? So delta B Y B into 100 is given. This is 20%, right? And uh, when it is uh, heated through 20 degrees, right? So change in temperature is given. Delta T is given 20 degrees. So we have to find what is the coefficient of linear expansion of metal. Right, please, uh, please guys uh, find this and uh, tell me what would be the coefficient of linear expansion. Uh, remember that it is volume, volume is given, right? So volume will give what? So who is, who is solving the problem? Ah, who is solving the problem? Okay, where did I? That's all. Okay, right. Yes, so what did you get, Marita? Yes, 3 into 10 to the power minus 2. Not sure. Why are you not sure? Okay, so V and then uh, delta T. Right, so delta V by V is what? A gamma delta T. And uh, this we know. So 1 by 5 is uh, gamma. And delta T is what? 20. So yes, gamma is uh, one by hundred, right? So gamma is zero point zero one. Okay, so so you so you got uh, what? Uh, uh, you so got... they've asked for linear expansion. Oh, yes. Oh yes. Uh, sorry. Sorry. 
so we got gamma is uh, 0.01 so alpha is what gamma by 3 right so 0.01 by 3 and this is what so this is 100 so let's say 1 by 3 and right Okay, so you got uh, the correct answer. You got 1 by 3 into 10 to the power minus 2, right? Yes, sir. Yes, so why everyone is not uh, cooperating? Why is everyone? Uh, is this uh, what? Is this confusing, everyone? You can go, you guys can tell. I'm not feeling well today. That's why my energy is low. But uh, what about you guys? What has happened to you guys? Hmm. Everyone, is there any problem in this in these questions? Hmm? So the next uh, topic is. Uh, before I go to heat transfer, the next topic is uh, I already taught this in the earlier class. So a specific heat uh, capacity, right? We learned in the yesterday class that it was what? S was dQ by, let's say, dT and then M, yeah, right? So per unit mass, you increase the temperature by one degree C for the amount of heat you need to increase the temperature to one degree so for one, one kg of that uh, thing, right? So this is the specific heat capacity. And uh, one more thing is that you have uh, the calorimetry, right? So the principle of calorimetry says that, let's say you have this uh, system, right? And uh, in this system, you have some water, Right, and you put some, uh, let's say, heated uh, some coin, which is what, which had some temperature, right? So this will give some temperature to this, right? So this is, so the heat uh, gained uh, by water will be heat lost by that coin. Right, that uh, what, whichever that uh, iron or what steel coin, what do you use? Okay, so that coin. So this is the principle of calorimetry, right? And uh, and you also have latent uh, heat of fusion or whatever. So let's say you have uh, some uh, water, right? And you provide some energy to it, right? Some heat energy. So firstly, what let's say the water as what water was at, let's say you guys have already uh, learned this in your chemistry classes. So let me just repeat that and then write all the formulas. Okay, so you heat that water, right? Let's say it was at uh, 40 degrees C, right? So, so you raise the temperature first. Uh, what you do is that first you raise this 40 degrees C temperature to 100 degrees C. And this is done by which process? Heat capacity process, right? Right, so this uh, you do with heat capacity, and then uh, at uh, 100 degrees C, the water changes to uh, the what vapors. Right, so the amount of energy to change this is called the latent heat. Right, uh, heat. So this is given by let's say uh, vapor is given by some mass which was there, there and then. Uh, latent heat uh, coefficient or what do you say? So how do you, so let's say uh, V, so how do we, H, F, H, V. Okay. 
or uh, let's say this is this is heat required and this is the latent heat of that vapor right okay understood this point guys and uh, similarly we will all have latent heat of condensation and all other changes so that happens at the same temperature first you change the temperature by the specific heat capacity and then you change with the latent heat right okay and the next thing that i want to tell is uh, the stephen's law right these are scoring, uh, so these are direct question and these are scoring uh, questions. So they can get you marks in your entrance exams. Right, so Stephen's law, what does it say? That for a black body, you have the energy will be directly proportional to the temperature, right? So this you must have learned in your, what, uh, in your chemistry class, right? So this is the black body radiation. And then you have the power will be the area, the total area that it acquires and then multiply with the energy. Right. So this will be sigma A T4. So this is the power, right? And uh, one more uh, important uh, thing is the Wien's displacement law, right? I'm not uh, proving anything here, but I'm writing just so that you can remember and you can solve this because they this comes they ask tight question based on this uh, these problems. So Wien's displacement law. What does it say that the maximum wavelength that uh, the body radiates it with is uh, related with the temperature, right? So this max and the temperature is some constant, right? So this is the Wien's displacement law. Okay. And uh, one more thing that I wanted to tell is the law of heating, right? So law of heating, what does it say? It says that your change in uh, heat is equal to what? A, L, and then you have T1 minus T2 by Okay, so this L cancels. So this is what A T here. Okay, so this is uh, what uh, the law of heating, Newton's law of heating, or what Newton's law of heating. Okay, guys, any question up to this point? So we will just use these formula. We will remember this formula, and then we will directly apply on the question that we are going to discuss now. Okay, so let us. Move on to some questions. Okay. Yes, so uh, this eighth question, right? This eighth question, you guys, Please try to solve this. So this one is directly based on the specific heat capacity. One thing is given is what? The radius and the uh, volume. Right, so what would be heat? is m c let's say m s you write or c you write m s delta t right and uh, q1 d okay Arpit, yes so and who else got uh, d because here it is given uh, 
the radius is given and the copper spheres are given right so copper sphere sphere is given right so sphere is given which means that we know the volume right and the same material is used which means that uh, one more thing so mass mass is related with the density so this is m by v and uh, the same material is used so the density will not change only the radius are changing right so okay so both the guys maita and arpit have got uh, same answers so yes anyone else guys any problem in this question what we will do is that uh, for q1 you calculate rho and then uh, what so rho v1 right c delta t okay and uh, for delta q2 you calculate uh, rho v2 c delta what right and delta t is given 1 kelvin so this is 1 kelvin right guys so this is how you will do this problem okay so no one is uh, replying so let me move ahead and uh, let me do this problem right i will uh, give you all the other problem as your homework okay so let us see this question okay the power radiated by a black body is uh, p right we already know what is power okay so power is what sigma a t o right and uh, it radiates maximum energy at wavelength lambda naught so lambda max is given so we have to keep in mind the wines law right and uh, if the temperature of the body is uh, now changed so they are changing this temperature if the temperature of the black body is now changed so that it radiates maximum energy at wavelength 3 by 4 right so p1 is uh, sigma a t1 4 right and uh, p2 is what sigma a t2 4 right and uh, the power p2 is uh, np okay so p2 sigma a t2 4 by p1 sigma a t1 4 is how much p2 is np so this is So this guy cancels. So n is t2 by t1 power 4. Right. And uh, we know the relation between this temperature and the wavelength, right? So they have given at wavelength 3 by 4. So lambda 2 is uh, 3 by 4 lambda 1. Right. This is given. So can you guys tell me what will be the value of n here? D. Okay. Yes, 81 by 256. So anyone else got 80, 81 by 256? Sorry, A. Okay. <laughs> yes. So A or D, who has got A and who has got other options? <coughs> Sorry, guys. Who has who else has got eight two fifty six by eighteen? 
one. Arpit, what about you? So we know that uh, lambda into t is uh, fixed, right? So lambda one t one is lambda two t two. Okay. So lambda one by lambda two, we have to find t two by t one, right? So this is t two by t one. So t two by t one is what lambda one, and this is three uh, lambda one by four. Right, so T2 by T1 is 4 by 3. Okay, now we can solve, right? So, what will be your n here? So, n will be 4 by 3 power 4, right, which is 256 by 81. Okay, right, mind. Okay, so. Uh, any question in this problem? Anyone? Any question in this problem? Hmm? No question. Okay, so a black body at uh, 227 degree radiates heat at the rate of 7 calorie centimeter square c square at a temperature of 7 to the rate of heat radiated in the same units will be what right so uh, they have given that uh, energy is uh, what uh, sigma t4 right so this is uh, sigma and uh, this is given what seven calorie uh, centimeter square whatever so seven and uh, sigma sigma t T is what? 227. Right, so sigma we can calculate. 7 by 227. Four. Right, and the rate of heat radiated in the CA minutes will be. Right. So at a temperature 727, at a temperature 727, the rate of heat would be what? Sigma and uh, 7. 27 power 4. So this would be what? 7 and then 727 by 227 by 4, right? Power 4. Okay. So this would be how much? And you guys can guess that this can't be 0, right? So I guess 112. Who else has got 112? Who else has got one one? Uh, yes, C. Okay. Yes, right, right. Okay, so. Let us, uh, so this uh, finishes our, what, uh, second, uh, mm, the thermal properties of the, what, uh, thermal properties of the gases or what, uh, materials, right? And uh, you guys, uh, let me, what let me do some problems here and then I will give you guys some homework. Okay, so this what is happening? Yes, so okay, so uh, this question a piece of ice falls from a height h so that it melts completely. 
only one quarter of the heat produced is absorbed by ice and all energy I of ice gets converted into heat during its fall. The value of it is what? So this came in uh, heat 2016, right? And uh, yes, can you guys uh, solve this? So one by fourth of energy is changes changes to latent heat, right? So one by fourth of we have to we have to keep in mind that uh, whatever the energy was, so it was kept at some height. So the energy would be what some potential energy, right? And then it uh, changes when it drops. So the ice starts to melt. Okay, so when it melts, which means that. Uh, some latent heat of uh, what melting is uh, going on, right? So the whichever we have to, as we have uh, learned so far, that uh, whatever the energy is lost, the same energy will be gained, right? So whatever the latent uh, heat of uh, that melting was, it would be one by fourth of the energy which is lost, right? Right, right, guys. Right, guys. So, uh, what? So, idea is that the whatever the energy is uh, absorbed, right? This would be equal to the latent heat of that melting. Right, melting. I should say. Okay. So use this and tell me what would be H. Yes. B. Yes. B one thirty six kilometers. Hmm. Yes. So anyone else got uh, B? Anyone else got? Uh... Anyone else got uh... B? So this would be what? M, M cancels. So G is 10. H we have to find. 4 and uh... right. So so LM is what? 3.4 into 10 to the power 5. Right, so this is how much? So 110 cancels this 4. So H is uh, what? 4, 4 is 16, 4, 3 is 12, and 13 into 10 to the power 4. Right, so this is uh, in uh, what? So this is in meters, right? Newton is uh, in meters, so this would be what? Three six uh, triple zero meters. So this would be one thirty six kilometer, right, guys? So right answer, right? Uh, absolutely right answer. Okay. So uh, this completes our uh, uh, thermal properties of the system, right? And in the next two class, I will be doing the thermodynamics, right? I'll be more focus focusing on the thermodynamical aspects of the gases, right? And then uh, we will use this uh, specific heat capacity, the thermal properties and uh, what we learned in the kinetic theory of gases. Those properties will be used in uh, solving the problems of thermodynamics, right? Because you have, uh, let's say you have some processes, let's say adiabatic process. So in that, uh, how the pressure, the volume is related, and uh, that is decided by this, uh, this uh, what kinetic theory of gases, right? So you have some gamma, and gamma is related. So and. Uh, so yes, in the next uh, two classes, I'll be talking about the thermodynamics. So up to this point, any question, guys?
Any question up to this point? Hmm? No, sir. Okay, so let's stop it here and uh, I will give you guys some homeworks, right? So uh, you try, please try to do this. Take the screenshot. So 11, 13 and 14. So this is your homework. Try to solve this. So Okay, guys, please uh, do these problems. I'm sorry, I was a little low on energy. So, yes. So, did you guys uh, take this screenshot? Yes. Okay, so let's stop it here. I'm uh, stopping early. So, you guys, uh, if you guys don't have any question, then 